Now joining us from the White House, National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications, Admiral John Kirby. Welcome, sir. It's awfully good to talk with you. You heard what Courtney was reporting right there, that the U.S. has conducted these retaliatory self-defense strikes against Iran-linked facilities in Syria. But look what's happening. The numbers are going in the wrong direction, given the fact that we're trying to deter any sort of incoming missiles, incoming attacks on U.S. military personnel. What's happening there? Is it not working? Well, certainly uh, we don't want to see any more attacks on our troops and facilities. And the fact that there's been some in the last few days after we took retaliatory strikes is obviously not a good thing. Um, and we'll continue to do what we have to do to protect our troops and our facilities. As we've said before, uh, if we're going to respond, we're going to do it at a time and in a manner of our choosing. We still retain that right. In fact, I would go so far as to say we retain the responsibility to make sure that we can better protect our troops and our facilities there in Iraq and Syria. Where is America's line, though? Because it if these enemies sir, are feeling so comfortable that targeting our bases across the Middle East or at least U.S. personnel stationed on bases, how concerned are you about the potential for quick escalation and potentially dragging the U.S. into this war? Yeah, as Secretary Austin said after we took those retaliatory strikes a few days ago, we don't seek conflict uh, with Iran. We're not trying to start a war. We don't want to see any escalation in hostilities. The whole reason we chose those targets really were twofold. One, to go after actual weapons and storage ammo depot capability for the IRGC, which is supporting these groups, the Revolutionary Guard Corps, uh, but also to deter future attacks. So again, we're going to take stock and hear what the situation is. And if we have to do this uh, again, we'll certainly do it. We'll act to defend our, our, our troops and our, our facilities and make sure we continue to have that capability there. Have you been having discussions? with the secretary, the defense secretary, on where America's line is. Of course, everything you're saying makes sense. You must uh, defend American military personnel in the region. But yeah. is there that point where if it gets crossed, we're in it? Uh I think we've already shown where the line is. I mean, uh, after uh, a series of attacks, uh, we took two very precise uh, targeted strikes uh, on facilities that belong directly to the Revolutionary Guard Corps, not the proxy groups that they're supporting, but right to them, because we know that without their support, these proxy groups couldn't operate. Again, I don't want to get ahead of where we are in the decision cycle. We're obviously watching this very, very closely. And as we've said before, we'll do what we have to do to protect our troops and, and our facilities. And if we respond to an attack, we're going to do it in a time and a manner of our choosing. Okay, let's pivot to what's happening on the ground in Israel and Gaza. So I want to play sound from Secretary Blinken this morning. Here it is, sir. We have um, about 400 American citizens and their family members, so it's uh, roughly a thousand people uh, who are stuck in Gaza and want to get out. Um, I'm focused on this intensely. Uh, my entire department is as well, both in the region and here. We're working with various parties to try to facilitate their departure from, from Gaza. The impediment uh, is simple. It's Hamas. Uh, we've not yet found a way to get them out uh, by whatever, through whatever place and by whatever means uh, that Hamas is not blocking. So potentially a thousand Americans there who need to get out of Gaza. That is not a group that would be hard to miss. But our reporters and our teams on the ground say, at least so far, they have not seen evidence of Hamas checkpoints or of Hamas blocking people trying to get out. Can you confirm that they are doing that? I, I think the Secretary Blinken said it uh, very clearly that Hamas is, is definitely throwing up roadblocks here, not physical roadblocks, but uh, obstacles to the negotiating process to get to get these people uh, out through Rafa. Uh, we're working on this very, very hard, not just uh, through interlocutors who have comms with Hamas, but with uh, other partners in the region, including Egypt and Israel. Uh, and this has been a focus of us since the very beginning of this conflict. We're not going to let it go. We're going to do everything we can to try to get folks out. Americans, clearly, but also there's uh, many, many hundreds of others uh, from other countries, other foreign nationals, if you will, uh, who want to get out as well. So if they're not putting up physical barriers, physical obstacles to these Americans getting out and the other foreign nationals, how exactly are they preventing them from getting out? Well, look, they control that part of the Rafa gate. So if you want to call that a physical obstacle, I'm happy with that. I mean, they control their, their side of the gate, uh, which is a fence, which is a gate. Um, but they're also, again, uh, larding up the discussions with the uh, 
uh, with, with demands that uh, we're, we're simply not able to detail publicly, but that we're working our way through. Obviously, we're not going to we're not going to accede to unreasonable demands, but we're trying to get these these people out. And 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 those negotiations they're ongoing and they're very active. Can I ask you very quickly about negotiations to get the hostages out? Is there anything you can share on that front? All I can tell you for sure, Alex, is that those two. Uh, are negotiations that are very active and very ener energetically being pursued uh, with partners in the region. Uh, we want to get those Americans home. Now, we don't have a whole lot of Americans that are being held hostage, less than 10. Um, but there are, as the Israelis have said, more than 200 others that are being held hostage, many of them Israelis. We want to get them all back to their families where they belong. But I can tell you, certainly given our equities here with the population of American citizens, uh, we're very active in these discussions with partners in the region, some of whom have better communication with Hamas than, than we are. And when you heard Secretary Blinken talk the other day about the possibility of exploring humanitarian pauses and why we think that that should be seriously considered, one of the reasons is to allow an avenue for hostage release should Hamas get to a point where we can negotiate their release. You got to make sure physically that they can go from where they're being held to safety uh, without having to worry about being uh, fired upon by either side. So, so we're actively pursuing those kinds of options.